Welcome to HelpYourMath.com and today's video we're going to be covering solving for x. In these equations we have just a single variable also so we have to keep that in mind when solving for x with single variables we can use these operations. Now in these problems we have uh, simple just x equations without fractions and we also have one with fractions in which I'll do two different styles of solving for it and um, one is easier than the other once you learn the trick which is called the LCD trick, it makes it a lot easier. But I'll walk through the long way before I take the shortcut on this. So let's begin with the first problem out of the set of three. And here we have 16, take away 4x's, equals negative 2, multiplying by x minus 1 as a binomial. Now the first step we want to take here is using the order of operations is, the first operation we see, since there's nothing to do in the parentheses, is going to be multiplication. So we're going to distribute the negative 2 to each term. And what we get here, the left side stays the same. The right side, we're going to get negative 2 times x, which is negative 2x's. Negative times a negative is a positive. And 2 by 1 is just 2. Now, once we get here, there's a format to solving this correctly. And what we want to do is we want to move the variable with the, with the lowest coefficient over to the other side. So we could get a positive coefficient. And it doesn't matter where your x lands on the left or the right, so long as we have an equality at the end. So what we want to do is move the negative 4x's over to this side so we can get a positive result. The opposite of negative 4x is positive 4x's. So we're going to add 4x's to both sides of the equation. And the result is a positive x on the right hand side. As the, the left side, the x's cancel out. All we have left is 16. Here negative 2x's plus 4x's gives us 2x's. And we just bring the 2 down for the ride. Now the next step here is going to be to get rid of the constant that's on the right hand side of the equation so we could solve for x by isolating the x term. And to do that what we do is we follow the same routine of the transposition, subtracting 2 to both sides so that we could cancel out these 2's here and subtract the same value of 2 on the left hand side. This keeps the equations equal. Once we cancel these 2 out, this side gives us a positive 14 and that's equivalent to 2 x's. Now to solve this equation, we just look at the coefficient and we want to divide both sides by the same coefficient of whatever the, whatever's next to the x. So in this case, we're going to divide both sides by 2. And we're dividing because it's the opposite of the multiplication, right? This is 2 times x, so to get rid of the 2, we have to divide by 2. And these reduce to 1, and this side gives us a 7. And that's our value for x for the first equation. We're going to take a similar approach to the second problem as this is again without fractions <clears throat> and in this equation we have 6 take away 3 x's take away 5 as a binomial term is equivalent to 7 x's take away 9 now the first thing I want to do here before I do anything is see my order of operations now I look inside the parentheses and there's nothing to do and the next thing to do would then be distribution but before we get there Let's take a look at what the distribution is because we don't recognize this multiplication easily. So what we want to do is we want to add the imaginary 1 here so we can understand the sign changes that are going to occur inside these parentheses. And by putting the negative 1 here it makes it easier for us to distribute a value instead of just a negative symbol. So here we have 6 comes down for the trip and we have negative 1 times 3x's which gives us negative 3x's. A negative 1 times a negative 5, negative by negative is positive. 1 by 5 is just 5. And the rest of everything comes down, literally. And now on the left hand side we have like terms. So we have a positive 6 and a positive 5. And we're just going to add these two together, right? So 6 plus 5 is 11. And we still have negative 3x's here. And now when we think about which of these two x's are smaller, just like we did before, where we saw negative 4 x's and negative 2 x's, negative 4 is smaller than negative 2, here negative 3 x's are less than 7 x's. So we're going to add 3 x's to both sides so that we can cancel out the left-hand side x's. And here we get 3 x's, 3 x's, we sum the two lines, this goes away, we just have 11 left over, and here the 7 x's plus 3 x's give us 10 x's take away the same 9 which comes down. Now again we want to isolate the x term. To do that we need to add the additive inverse to the negative 9 to both sides of the equation so we can cancel out this negative 9. So we add the 9 here, add the 9 here, add the equations, these two cancel, these two become 20 
and this is equivalent to 10 x's. And now to solve for the, the x term, we want to use the opposite operation to isolate the x. So this is 10 times x. So to use the opposite operation, we're going to divide by the same constant that we have in front of the x, which is 10. We're dividing both sides. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. These tens just go away. And here we have 20 divided by 10, which is just 2, which is equivalent to x. And that takes care of the first component of without fractions for solving for x. Now the next component I'm going to do in two fashions. So I'm going to do it basically the long way and then using the LCD shortcut, which is a very useful technique for even higher level upper, uh, math courses. So let's take a look at what that looks like. <coughs> so doing this the long way, when we have x over 3 plus 1 equals x over 6, what we ought to do is get the x terms on one side of the equation. But for some of us, it's a little bit difficult to determine which one's larger than the other. So what we'll instead do is make the LCD work for one side and then try to use cross multiplication to solve this. So basically what we're doing is we're taking this one and we're replacing the one with 1 over 1. And now we can complete the LCD on this side, which is just 3, because 1 can turn into a 3 by multiplying this side by 3 over 3. Now 3 over 3 represents a 1, so what we're doing is we're not manipulating the equation at all. We're keeping the value the same, and what we get is x over 3 plus 3 over 3, which is equivalent to x over 6. And then what happens is we can add these two by keeping one denominator and summing the top numerators in one fraction and making it equal to the second fraction. And what we do here is we cross multiply to solve for x. So on one hand of the equation, we have 6 times x plus 3 when we cross these two. And when we cross these two, we have 3 times x. And again, just like the previous problems, this becomes one of these exact problems where we're just distributing and solving for x. So the distribution here gives us 6x's plus 18 when we do 6 by 3. And finally, 3x's on the right-hand side. Now here the big deal is the smaller x here is the 3x's. So we need to move these 3x's over here or we could just move the 6x's over there and have a negative term and divide by a negative x. As I haven't covered any division with a negative number, what I'm going to do in this video with this problem is move the 6x's over, even though it's uh, unorthodox for what we're doing. So I'm going to subtract 6x's to both sides so I can isolate my x variable. And this gives me 18 is equivalent. 3x's take away 6x's is negative 3x's. And so continuing, we see we have 18 is equivalent to negative 3x's. We're going to divide both sides by the coefficient. Since this is multiplying together, the opposite of multiplication is division. We're going to divide by the negative 3. And so these negative 3's go away, and we're just left with x on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, we have 18 divided by a negative 3, which a positive divided by a negative is negative. 18 divided by 3 is just 6. Now this is a little long because you have to do the LCD. And there's pretty much no way to avoid it if you're following the protocol of what you're doing with fractions. However, there is a trick called the LCD trick. And the LCD trick makes working with fractions very easy, even if you're working with complex fractions, all sorts of fractions, anytime you're solving for a variable. So here what we're going to do is we're going to discover what the LCD is first and then use the LCD to multiply every single term in the problem so that we can have no fractions at all. And we should have something that looks similar to this. If not this, it should look exactly like this one down here, the 6x's plus 18 plus 3x's. So I'm just going to write that down just to see if we get the same result, right? And now, um, it probably won't be one of these results, actually, because we're going to be using the LCD trick. It could actually just be anything. So let's take a look at what our LCD is. We have a denominator of 3. We have a denominator of 6. And the LCD between these two fractions, which are the only fractions in the problem, are going to be 6, because it's the first number that 3 and 6 make. So what we're going to then do is take the LCD as 6, 
And we're going to multiply every single term by 6. So we have 6 times x over 3 plus 6 times 1 equals 6 times x over 6. Now here, when we're doing this multiplication, this is the same as 6 over 1. And these reduce. The 3 goes into the 6 two times. So this is the same as just saying 2x's. Plus 6 times 1 is just 6. And here we know this is also 6 over 1. These 6's reduce perfectly. And it leaves us with just x over 1, which is just x. Now, similarly to the last one I did, I'm going to move everything to the right-hand side because the constants are already here. And to isolate the x, it's just one movement. So I'm going to just subtract 2x's to both sides by using the additive inverse of positive 2x's, which is negative 2x's. When these two cancel out, we have 6 on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, x take away 2x's or just negative x, which is the same as negative 1x. So I'll just leave the 1 in front to make the last step a little easier. Negative 1 times x, to do the opposite operation of negative 1 times x, is to divide by negative 1. So this way we can isolate our x term. And here we're dividing by negative 1. Here the negative 1's become just positive 1. We have just x on the right. On the left-hand side, a negative divided by a positive, I mean a positive divided by a negative is negative. 6 divided by 1 is just 6. And it gives us the very same answer, but the work is a lot shorter. So this is the LCD trick. Thank you.